Um, I did a previous recording for you guys and I got really emotional with the message. So I had to re-record because I, I want to convey the message properly. Okay. Um, first of all, when I was shuffling the cards, I saw this really, um, it's a really sexy scene. So what I saw was you guys are a knight and you have dark hair, you have tan skin, a really, really handsome looking knight. And you're in your tent and there's a fire glowing, there's a bed, and you're standing barefoot on this um, animal fur carpet looking thing. And uh, you're kind of, you know, you have your trousers on and there's this really beautiful woman. She's beautiful. And she has, um, I think she has curly hair, wavy hair, really long wavy hair and her hair kind of shimmers. And um, she has like really sparkly eyes and she's helping you put your armor on. She's helping you put your clothes on and then she's helping you put your armor on. And you're looking very longingly at this woman. And I feel like the thoughts running through your head is I'm going off to war tomorrow. And I might not see you again. And then she's looking at you while she's helping you put your clothes on and your armor on. And she's like, you're going off to war tomorrow. Or she's thinking, you're going off to war tomorrow. I might not see you again. So two people that are really attracted to each other. And the two of you are looking at each other. But you're not really voicing these thoughts, these feelings, these emotions. So everything is so bottled up. And you know... What I see is two people who are really attractive and they're both attracted to each other and there's immense chemistry, just immense. It's like really intense. And, you know, there's a fireplace, there's a bed and it seems like, you know, they should be intimate, but they're not for whatever reason. And so it seems like there is a strong sense of finality there's also a strong sense of, I have nothing to lose. But then again, I have everything to lose. Because I'm going off to war tomorrow and I might not survive. I might not come back. I might not see you again. So that's what I have for you. And it made me really emotional because the past two weeks, I mentioned for you guys that you have been really closed off with your heart. It's really hard for you to kind of um, show your affection and to show somebody how you feel about them. And I feel for many of you, for whatever reason, whatever reason that you have for holding back, it's justified in your mind. And I feel like for many of you, you have a really good reason for doing what you do and for pushing the other person away and for not showing your emotions. You have a good reason. I'm not going to discredit that. And the reason that you have is that there are more important things. There's this battle that I have to prepare for. There are bigger things that I have to do. As a knight, I have my code of honor. As a person in charge, I have men that are, you know, um, that I need to lead by example. I have bigger things that I need to worry about. So I'm going to sweep these emotional issues aside and deal with them at a later date. And the later date is now because you have been confronted with it. You can no longer kick the, the can down the road. You're running out of road. And any time, so once again, I don't know if I told you this, but um, I might have mentioned it with... Um, some of the latter signs, so maybe like Scorpio or uh, Sagittarius. So I mentioned, you know, I believe in signs and everything that we do in life, we are always presented with signs to tell us of uh, what's going to happen. And especially if we ignore something, if we, if we ignore a sign, the signs get bigger and bigger and bigger until we can no longer ignore it, until the event unfolds, okay? And I feel like, too, with things that we try to sweep under the rug, okay, with things that we have been in denial about, 
some of these things, you know, they, they exacerbate, they blow up or they implode. And I feel like you have to deal with them. And, um, what I feel in this situation here is, um, first of all, family expectations, trying to do the right thing by family members, trying to do the right thing as the mother figure or the father figure within your family unit, trying to appease everybody, trying to, you know, uh, crowdsource when it comes to what should we do as a family unit? What should we, uh, what should we eat today? What should, where should we move to? Um, how many children are we going to have? Like things like that, where everything is a discussion, where everything is like, let's crowdsource, let's get everybody's opinion. Let's do everything together. And then your own sense of your own needs, your own wants gets drowned out by the voice of the crowd. And I also feel like you do as well put other people's needs be before your own. And once again, I'm seeing like, you know, this bigger picture, I have to take care of all the big picture stuff. I have to take care of all the necessities, the survival stuff. I don't have time for these emotions. I don't have time to really think about, you know, am I shortchanging myself? Am I getting my emotional needs met? And I feel like you've been in this state for quite some time. Um, I'm seeing eight months for some of you. Eight months. So <clears throat> we are in November. So I feel like March something. No, is that correct? We are in November. Yeah. So April. I'm sorry. I can't do math. So whatever the situation is, I, I feel like, you know, it's been waging on for quite some time. And I feel like it becomes this, um, at first it's kind of like a little bit of a cramp in your stomach. And then it becomes like a little bit of a, a sore spot. And then now it's like crippling pain. And it's like, so, there's something that you have been ignoring and I feel like it's exacerbated. Okay. And it's gotten to this point where it's really, really difficult for you to ignore it any further. And I feel like your emotional needs have not been met for some time, but something happened in March, possibly March or May or April that made you realize, oh my God, I can't ignore this any longer. And I feel like you have been going through the motions, you know, getting your work done, doing what is expected of you, uh, tuning out distraction, tuning out your thoughts, tuning out these premonitions or these um, nagging feelings, because you had to take care of all these earthy, practical things. This is a picture of a farmer. He's probably got a wife. He's probably got kids, right? And he's the one laboring in the fields. He's taking care of his plants and his garden or his crops. And he is meticulously like just minding it day after day. Because God forbid, if there is a poor harvest, his whole family is going to starve. So there's a lot of responsibilities riding on you for whatever reason. Some of you could have a family and you're the sole breadwinner. And if anything goes wrong with your job, you know, what's going to happen to the kids? What's going to happen to your wife? What's going to happen to the house? What's going to happen with the mortgage, the car payments? There's a lot riding on you. And then some of you might be, you know, like a head of a corporation or even a supervisor or even a manager. And if something goes wrong, you're the one that gets blamed for it. So you have to be extra vigilant. You have to be on top of your employees. You have to make sure everybody is where they're supposed to be. So there's a lot of pressure for you to do things the right way, to perform, to excel. So every minute is accounted for. So you don't have time for all these frivolous thoughts or these things, you know, quote unquote feelings, right? And others of you, I have this card, seven of wands. You're the fixer. You're the one that, you know, fixes everybody else's problems. You come to work and every day it's like, do this, do that, fix this, fix that. And responsibilities just mount up. You might not have even, you know, had time to take a, a, a good vacation. 
Okay, if you're away from work for too long, things get out of control because people are incompetent and they don't know what they're doing. And, you know, the place might catch on fire. So you've had a lot of responsibilities and honestly, a lot of people depending on you. And I just feel like it's this pressure cooker, like it's going to implode or explode. And um, there has been a lot of stress. There has been a lot of stress regarding work. There has been a lot of pressure from higher ups. There has been a lot of expectations imposed upon you. And I feel like it's, it's just, it has been very difficult. And so you sweep away your needs. You put your needs on the back burner as you get through the day to fight these battles, to take care of these um, putting out fires and to, you know, make sure that your family is well fed, make sure that your crops are growing and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. And you definitely neglect your own needs. And I don't even know how to advise you because there's a lot of responsibilities that are on your plate and you're doing, honestly, you're doing what I would have done too. Take care of these responsibilities, suppress our emotions, go through the motions and just, you know, one day at a time, right? Like that's what you're doing. But I feel like there's this yearning, there's this ache, like, is this the best way to live? Is this all there is to life? Is this what my job is all about? Is this, you know, my destiny for the rest of my life? No, it's not. There shouldn't be a way to do this. There should be a happier way to enjoy the fruits of your labor, to go to work and be able to leave work at work. And to go home and to be around the people that you love. So this isn't your destiny. This is some, something that you're finding yourself in. And the only way to get rid of it is to find a way out. Find a different way of doing. And I feel like you're not doing that. So here's where I can advise you. We have here the Ace of Wands. This is new passion. Okay. This is like a new project, a new source of passion, something that really stirs deep emotions and feelings within you. And this is something that you wanted to do for quite some time. You have been suppressing it. And I feel like the flame has gone out of the situation. Because of all these things that you are preoccupied with, you kind of put this wand on the back burner. And over time, it just, you know, the, the fire has gone out. And so it's time to find this passion again. If you are finding yourself at a place where you're working so hard and you're waiting for, you know, promotions, you're waiting for the next step, it's time to take the next step. You're not happy here. You need to take the next step. And I feel for some of you, there's a lot of fear here about reputation and uh, l let's just say this because this did come out okay like you're in an organization right and it, you know it's a big organization but everybody still kind of knows everybody and there's one position opens up and four people in that organization applies for that one position and you want to apply for it, but you're like, what if I don't get uh, accepted or selected? And everyone's going to know that I didn't get selected. So no, I'm not going to apply for it. I don't want to be embarrassed. That's what I'm feeling is happening. And so who cares what people think? This is an opportunity that you need to go for. I feel like you might have missed out on it in the past and you regret it. You thought so-and-so was going to apply for it, but they didn't because they were probably thinking the same thing. And so no one got the position and then they re, um, repost the position or somebody outside got the position. And so, you know, now there's another opportunity coming into the picture and you should grab these opportunities because where you are right now, you're just in a state of like suspension, just waiting for a situation to unfold. And it's not really... 
it's it's very stressful is what it feels like to me it's very stressful okay so aside from that let's talk about this lady this really really beautiful lady and uh, I apologize for people who are not heterosexual whatever um, images I get I'm just gonna relay it because um, that's just the way the messages are meant to you know come out so you can swap the genders if you want to okay you can swap the genders but either way there's somebody that you're dealing with who is really really attractive like you're really attracted to this person um, I am seeing I'm seeing a lot of interracial uh, couples like people that are um, like different cultures different races different age groups as well and um, I feel like that's why there's this natural attraction okay so I feel like some of you might have married somebody that you know is culturally very similar to you age-wise very similar to you and then you realize that you know what we're from the same culture from the same age group but we have nothing in common and then you meet somebody who's like really exotic who's very different from you and then you have everything in common with that person and you're just like what how did that happen and I'm also sensing because they're so different because you're not used to looking at somebody that's different that's why they're so exotic and that's why they're so striking and that's why they're so beautiful but the way this person shows up here is the stars this is somebody that possibly could be very famous and there 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 is a, a very soothing energy about this person okay this is one of the most um, the, the card represents Aquarius but I'm not going to name signs here because I feel like it doesn't matter the sign um, this is somebody who's very exalted okay so they follow their true passion and they do whatever they want they don't care about what people say I mean she's bathing you know she doesn't care that people see her naked she doesn't care so this is somebody who doesn't care and I feel like because you care so much about reputation and you know what's expected of you and you're going through the motions that you find this person really fascinating just because they do whatever they want just because they're really true to themselves and just because they're happy I mean look at her she's she's so incredibly just free and happy and just um, she's glowing and you're trying to figure out where is this glow coming from is it external is it because there's a torch right here or is it internal because she's living her life the way that she wants to live her life so I definitely feel you could be female watching this and there's somebody in your life that you really admire and you wish you could be like them you could be you know interested in well there there could be somebody you're interested in regardless of their gender you find really beautiful but it is not just beauty there's something about this person that draws you to them because of their free will because they have always listened to their heart because they do things that normal people would be too afraid to do and I feel like this person is trying to push you outside of your comfort zone um, by being with them there's really strong passion here by the way that you have suppressed for a very long time okay you definitely um, you, you're carrying a torch for this person and um, I almost feel like you feel it's unrequited love you feel it's unrequited love but it's not unrequited love because the 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 scene that I saw was two people who were thinking the same things but for whatever reason you know it's his last day he's going off to war and they're not consummating their love so you're it's not unrequited it's been there the whole time but it was hard for you for them to reach you as well they were focused on their things okay they she's focused on doing what she does as a water bearer um, teaching people taking care of things she's always just pouring water in and out I don't know what she's doing but she's doing something and you're doing something 
So the two of you are just like always, always busy doing what Taurus do and doing what the other person does. And so there's this love here that's just never talked about, never discussed, never brought to light and never seen the light of day. And I feel for some of you, this is a source of temptation for you, especially if you're in a relationship. If you're in a relationship, this card came out in uh, Ten of Cups in the reverse. You might have hit a very um, rough spot in your relationship. You might be going through the motions in your relationship and you might not be emotionally invested in it anymore. Or you might feel this sense of, you know, lack of compatibility with your relationship partner. The two people are like the same height. They look kind of similar. So I feel like you might be bored with the same old, you know, routine. Um, and then this person, I have here the chariot. And usually I think about this as like, you know, the um, in the traditional Rider weight deck, you have the two Sphinx and one is dark and one is light. So I usually think of this as like culturally dating somebody who's different or being attracted to somebody who's very different or like um, age gaps as well. Life experiences, people who have like a drastic differences or drastic differences in life experiences. So there's a love here that's not really getting off the ground. And we have the devil, which is a huge source of temptation. And I feel as if, you know, it's my last day. I'm going off to war. I might not come back. And so you, you have to find a way to do something. Okay, you have to find a way to speak those words and to kind of like speak from the heart and not hold your emotions in anymore because you have suppressed a lot of things. You might even be dealing with, you know, I'm not happy with this work environment. I, I want to get out of it. And yes, you should. And you might not have, um, I'm sorry, there's a, a pop up on my screen. You might not have that sense of like, um, it, it's like doing things out of a sense of duty, but just going through the motions and not really being emotionally invested in it. So that's what I'm seeing here, Taurus. Um, I do hope that we can find a solution to this so that we can clear up this energy so that it doesn't come back next week, okay? Because like I said, it's almost like you have your last chance. You're going off to war and, you know, that whole spiel, but you have to make a change here. And you have the opportunities here all around you. But I, I don't feel like you're making the move. I, I see lack of movement here. So let me just see. What is the outcome in this situation here for Taurus? Okay, you are going to make a move. The move is going to, the, the, the move that you are making, you know, the action that you are making is going to come after a lot of waiting. Okay, this is a card about fearing censorship, fearing like the um, judgment from other people, being burned at the stake, be doing something that is not socially acceptable and feeling like you're going to get um, ostracized or burned at the stake. Okay, that's what it feels like to me. There's definitely a love situation that is financially laced, a love situation that you can't get out of because of financial obligations. And what I, what I feel though, what is the outcome for Taurus? When these three cards came out, I feel like you're not making a move until, you know, you absolutely have to, until you drop the ball. Until you drop the ball. And that might be when it's too late to grab this new opportunity. That's when it might have already, all the liquids from this cup might have already run out, okay? And I feel like at that time, that's when you're going to realize what is what was it really important to you. And by that time, it might not be... 
it might not come back. So the outcome for Taurus, you need to make a move this this week, okay? The Mercury retrograde, I feel like what it did was, especially for the fixed sign, so Aquarius, Leo, uh, you guys, and Scorpio, what it did was it forced you to face some truths. And I feel like it is an emotional truth. You know, does the other person love me? Do I love the other person? If I love the other person, does it even matter that they love me? So should I just tell them how I feel even though they don't love me? Or even though I might not be sure how, if they love me? And I feel like for other fixed signs, it was sort of like, I'm going to bear my soul, especially for the Scorpio. I'm going to bear my soul and then the other person will let me know how they feel and then I can lay it to rest. I feel like for the Leos, it was definitely, you know, do is this partner in it with me for life? Okay, so it was like reassessing their major relationship and to figure out, is this my ride or die type of partner? And I feel like for you, it was getting you to open up. It was getting you to open up for the Aquarius people. It was forcing them to see how their actions have driven people away. And I feel like for you, it might be a similar theme, but I feel like you have been very consistent. So it was forcing you to, to, to like put your emotional needs on the front burner, put yourself on the front burner. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. And um, I hope it resonates. And I hope that you can, you know, find some guidance from this. Okay. It was hard for me to find guidance and give you guys guidance, but I hope that it's helpful.